Adequate exposure of the surgical field is a key point in the success of surgery. However, in laparoscopy, exposure has frequently been limited to the combination of pneumoperitoneum and Trendelenburg. In addition, one of the limitations of the technique is that the assistant has only one free hand to help the surgeon. If the assistant uses the grasper to hold a structure, he becomes unable to participate in the dissection. Organ suspension by means of straight needles is an effective strategy designed to overcome these problems. However, its use requires training and manipulation of straight needles in the abdominal cavity, which is not risk-free. Injuries to vessels and to the bowel can occur. In addition, crossing the abdominal wall can be particularly challenging in obese patients. Finally, even in expert hands, results can be different from those expected. The T-Lift is a disposable device, especially designed to suspend diverse structures easily and safely. The device consists in the T-shaped bracket, a metallic inserter and a blue lock. The technique of suspension is particularly simple. The T-Lift is loaded inside the metallic introducer. The inserter is then passed through the abdominal wall and through the structure that is to be suspended. The T-Lift is pushed and its arms open up taking a T-shape. It is advisable to grasp the T prior to beginning the retrieval of the inserter in order to reduce traction on the tissue. The T-lift is then pulled up until tension of the suspended structure is achieved. The T is fixed by means of the blue lock, maintaining the traction. As the system is easy to unlock, tension can be adjusted according to the steps of the surgery. Traction can be distributed along the two arms of the device, allowing to exert more tension on the tissue. This is known as the T-shaped configuration. Another alternative is to orientate the device with its thin arm upwards, creating a J-shape. This allows to apply all the pressure on one spot only, limiting the risk of damaging the tissue or the device. In cases of deep infiltrating endometriosis, particularly with bilateral endometriomas, ovarian suspension facilitates the dissection of the rectovaginal area and of the ureters. The ovaries are suspended after adesiolysis and drainage of the endometriomas. Attention should be paid to avoid passing through the hilum in order not to harm the ovarian vascularization. During sacrocolpopexy, the sigmoid is suspended at the level of the left flank. The inserter is passed through one or two epiploic appendixes and the T-lift is pushed and applied in a J-shape configuration. The assistant gently pulls up the sigmoid as the device is retracted, reducing tension on the epiploic appendixes. This simple maneuver facilitates the exposure of the promontory and of the right side of the pelvis, where the most important part of the dissection is carried out. In this case, the recto sigmoid is fixed laterally. The assistant's hand is blocked, pulling up the bowel and the surgeon's movements are limited during the dissection of the pararectal fossa. The bowel is suspended laterally by the visceral peritoneum by means of two T-lift devices. The device is orientated with a thin arm upwards to concentrate the tension, reducing the possibility of breaking either the tissue or the device. The exposure of the surgical field is improved and the assistant is free to help the surgeon. When the bowel cannot be successfully suspended by the peritoneum or the epiploic appendixes, an interesting alternative is to combine this technique with the use of a sling. The sling is passed under the meso and the T-lift is passed through the sling. Tension is distributed along the sling, creating a satisfactory suspension of the sigmoid in difficult cases. Using the same technique, the ureter can be suspended to facilitate the dissection of the parametrium. The use of the sling is atraumatic and particularly suitable for this organ. Proper visualization of anatomical landmarks is crucial for the success of paravaginal repair. The parietal peritoneum can be retracted lateral and posteriorly, improving the exposure of reticus space. The defect can be more easily evaluated and corrected. 
Adequate exposure of the surgical field is mandatory during lumbar, aortic, lymphadenectomy, particularly in obese patients. The suspension of the peritoneum by means of T-lift devices is a useful alternative to improve the visualization of the area. In addition, the tent shape of the lifted peritoneum keeps ileal loops outside of the operative field. The anatomy of the inframesenteric area is widely exposed and dissection can be pursued. The position of the camera is switched to the suprapubic trocar and the supramesenteric area is now dissected. A fifth suspension of the peritoneum is used in the cranial margin of the dissection. As a result, the third portion of the duodenum is lifted improving the visualization of the left renal vein. The uterus can be suspended by the round ligaments using the T-lift device. Attention should be paid to avoid damaging the epigastric arteries in the abdominal wall and the operator should be aware of the position of the fallopian tubes. This technique is particularly useful when the uterine manipulator cannot be used or must be removed. For instance, as when a bowel resection is performed through natural orifices. The wide exposure of the posterior compartment is demonstrated. The bladder can be suspended either by the peritoneum or directly from its muscularis layer. This technique is useful in radical hysterectomy, particularly in difficult cases when tissues are inflammatory or fibrotic after cone biopsy. The traction exerted by the T-lift device improves exposure, facilitating the dissection of the anterior parametrium. The vagina can be temporarily closed using the T-lift device, preventing carbon dioxide leakage during bowel resection. The device is then removed and the resected bowel can be extracted through the vagina. With the transanal bowel extraction technique, the T-lift is used to keep the rectal stump opened. The proximal segment of the bowel containing the lesion is closed with an endoloop and exteriorized through the open rectum. The exact location of a suspicious polyp is identified by intraoperative colonoscopy. Two T-lift devices are then positioned above and under the polyp to clearly delimitate its position. The devices are pulled up and the colonic wall containing the polyp is resected by means of a linear stapler. The wall segment is extracted through an endoscopic bag. The specimen containing the T-lift device and the polyp is displayed. At the end of the procedure, the device can be removed either by cutting its tip and extracting the two parts separately or by grasping the thick arm and pulling the device out through the trocar. Organ suspension with the T-lift device is easy and fast. Exposure of the field is improved, providing safety and simplifying the surgery.